Hi all. Let's do a plow security video uh, for the summertime. It's a pretty common item to be stolen and uh, you can guarantee there's people in your area that have checked out your plow thinking about stealing it. So what I do is I cover it up. I try to get it out of sight as much as possible. Maybe even put a fence around it so they just can't pull the truck up to it, throw it in the back. I also cover it up to uh, help prevent sun damage. You know, mine's a plastic plow, a poly plow, and the lights up here are plastic. So sitting out in the sun all summer long, it's just hard on the plastic. Plus the hoses, you know, the hydraulic hoses are getting old and uh, I just want to keep them out of the sun as much as possible. Something else is lights. Lights deter like 90% of crime. Just having a light on in your driveway or where you have your plow stored. I was a security guard in my younger days for eight years and I've read a lot about security. And I remember one book, the very first line was, the main way to prevent crime is to turn on a light. So always have lights on your plow. And these days, uh, you can get exterior cameras uh, that are wireless, so they're real easy to hook up and just connect them to your computer or your phone. I've seen cameras on Amazon go on sale for like 50 bucks or less that you can connect to with your phone or your computer. So for a uh, $5,000, $10,000 plow, it's, it's well worth the... Uh, cost. So I'll go ahead and uncover it and we'll get into the rest of it. Okay so if they want to steal your plow these things are pretty heavy. You really can't pick it up and just throw it in the back of a bed. Uh, what they need to do is pull up in here and hook up to it some type of plow connection on the front of their pickup truck. What I do is I take off the handles. Even if they were able to pull up in there, there's no handles, so they couldn't connect, okay? These are the handles that would go in there. I have a whole video on how to put these in. Uh, then you can see I also put locks inside here. So even if they did have some type of pole, with them they wouldn't be able to get it in there and I suppose I could put something else through here have a long rod going through here because they could still just kind of stick something in there so that might be a better idea is just to have a long pole here and have it locked on both ends One separate one here with the lock, one separate one here with the lock, then it would take them twice as long to uh, cut through it. Okay. And then you can see I have chains, chains and multiple locks. You know, they wouldn't be able to get through here to, in order to hook up to it and I have a separate lock on this side and those chains go down to the ground uh, what I have going here I put uh, three four bags of cement down in the ground it goes down probably three four feet and there's a bunch of rebar that go back in the dirt so they can't just pull the cement out of the ground 
these things here, the, these are shackles from uh, Tractor Supply. They're like $20, $30 shackles. And then you can see I have the uh, chains wrapped all around the main brace there. So it's more than just cutting one chain. They'd have to cut four or five chains or more in order to uh, move it. I've seen videos on YouTube where they have chains that are really durable. You can't cut through them. But it's expensive. It's like $70, $80, $90 for a couple feet. That might be worth it to at least get one. Get one piece and have that connected to the plow. These locks are great, but uh, there's definitely better locks, but you pay through the nose for some of those real those real good locks. So I think these are fine because it's gonna slow them down. They have to stand here and cut through multiple locks with a hacksaw. It's gonna take a half hour, hour, so. Okay. Uh, something else is these things here. They'll steal these shocks. Um, I haven't worried about mine because mine are probably as old as the plow. So uh, I plan on replacing them sometime soon. So I haven't really worried about them, but they'll steal the parts off the plow. They, they can't steal the whole plow, but they'll steal the parts. They'll steal the lights. They'll steal the hydraulic. I would have taken it off and brought it in for the summer, but uh, my buddy that lives around the corner that works on stuff, he tried to get that bottom bolt off. See, there's that, that that bottom bolt here that holds this on. See, he tried to get this bolt off because I bought the lock. There's a lock, a, a padlock that you you can buy that goes through there. But uh, he tried to get it off, and he said it, it's rusted on; it wouldn't come off. So that's why I figured if he couldn't get it off, they couldn't get it off to steal it. So. This is the other side. See that one bolt here holds the hydraulic on. Uh, he had a wrench on there and he was standing on it. He was bouncing up and down. He said the only way to get that off is to burn it off. So there's actually a padlock that uh, Myers sells that would go through here. It's just something like a master lock. So they just can't unscrew the bolt and steal the hydraulic. Okay, so here's those special padlocks. You can see they're genuine Meyer parts. They're pretty expensive. I think uh, this one was like 70, 80 bucks. And that would just go inside here in place of that bolt. See, and, see, and that would just go up inside there in place of that bolt. But, uh, like I was saying, we couldn't get that bolt off, so that's why I haven't used it. Okay, so, and then this one would go in here so there's a padlock that would hold this in here I just never got around to putting it on okay so you can tell that one's way too long because it hangs down way too far and then one more thing is every plow has a serial number Mine just came on a sticker. You know, if you guys watched some of my earlier videos, you saw it was a, was a uh, 
really rusty plow. So I took the sticker off and uh, I have it in the house. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to engrave the serial number on the plow. Okay, so it's an 11 digit number. I'm gonna see if I can get it on here somewhat straight. Okay, so the previous video we went over the engraver. You can engrave with a regular Dremel, but this is a regular Dremel engraver. A fellow at the hardware store, he told me there is a difference. And uh, I'm not an expert at the stuff, but uh, this is a reciprocating engraver. Reciprocate means move backward and forward in a straight line. Or it could mean move up and down. A repetitive up and down motion. So I looked on their website and I couldn't really find any specs on what this is actually doing. So I don't know if it's a reciprocating back and forth or reciprocating up and down. Okay, but that would be the difference between the uh, Dremel engraver and the Dremel rotary tools. The specs on the website did say that it's uh, 7200 SPM, 7200 strokes per minute. 7200 strokes per minute. And this is a stroke adjustment let's see if I turn it on let's see if let's see if we can tell let's see if we can see it all I'll, I'll put it on slow so it doesn't really look like if it's going up or down so This is the carbide tip that came with the engraver. It's supposed to be good for metal. But it said in the directions that we read in the previous video that you might want to use a diamond tipped for harder jobs. So I found this at Walmart, five bucks. So we'll try it with both of them. So there's the number there, 7150. That's cutting in there pretty good. This template, I, I, I can't get that down in there. I'm, I'm going to have to try to fold it here. Yep. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so I cut the template in half. It, it cut real easy. It wasn't real hard plastic. Yeah. 
Okay, let's see if you can see that number. That's actually deeper than it was cutting in the samples we did earlier. Now we'll do the second number. That's cutting a little too deep, so I'm, I'm going to put that back on about half. Not bad for a first try, right? <laughs>